and welcome to the Hubfiz live show where you can get ideas to help your eco-conscious business grow. And today I am joined by Sarah Matthews of Sarah by Nature and she is a whole food plant-based recipe developer and chef and we're talking about my lifestyle and my business. So welcome Sarah. Hello Karen, thanks for asking me. Yeah, great to have you on the show. Um, so a couple of questions I wanted to go through and ask you. Um, what, since lockdown, have you found that your business goals have changed? Um, well, they've probably been more um, fine-tuned, but the goals really haven't changed as such. Um, my aims and goals really are to encourage people to get more plants strong and to encourage them to get into the kitchen and cooking. Um, so that hasn't changed. Um, it has sort of been more fine-tuned because obviously as my journey develops with my food journey so then you know what the message I'm trying to give out does as well I think really the biggest change is the delivery of that of you know getting that information out there to people um, before I would have workshops with sort of 20 people in a room we'd create some food then all sit together and eat and share stories and experiences but now obviously with the current situation that's not possible to have that many people in a room. So I think the delivery of uh, what I'm doing has changed, is gonna change and is changing. So things like um, online tutorials and online workshops, I think is the way forward really, because obviously you can't have that many people in a room now. So that hopefully that will get to that again, but for the time being, obviously the delivery has changed rather than the goal. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's just a way of people having to adapt, really, in the current situation, yeah. isn't it? Um, and has have you found then um, the sustainability has become more important to you, or was that something? It was something that was um, has always been important. I mean, um, choosing a plant based diet is probably the single biggest thing you can do um, on your own to help you know heal and protect the planet. Um, so that was one of the factors that made going plant-based an easy decision for me alongside lots of other things. Um, so on, on a bigger scale, yes, I mean, that's really important. But with lockdown, we found that because food wasn't as readily available at the beginning with, you know, deliveries of food and, and what have you, um, it, I've been buying my food or we've been getting our food, like our vegetables from local farm shops. So that's more sustainable. And we've now, I've always grown fruit and veg, even if it's just been a pot of tomatoes on the back doorstep, but we've now got a bigger allocated sort of vegetable plot. So then that's more sustainable for us because, you know, from a two pound packet of seeds, you can yield quite a lot of vegetables. So again, sort of sustainability there, but we reuse, we recycle, we upcycle, you know, make do amend and that's part of you know what I do anyway but it's obviously become much it's been impacted more with the current situation because you're having to do that and be a bit more resourceful because you just can't get your hands on what you need really yeah so, I think it has it's become a lot of people have got out and done a lot more gardening and growing their own food now so I think it's I think it's really great that's one great thing I think that has come out of lockdown yeah. and and, and that leads on to my next question, really, is, um, you, you know, has your passion for garden to plate inspired your business, obviously, with growing your garden and everything? I think that's yeah. something you talked about a few years ago, even. Yes, I mean, um, the, there's nothing more satisfying than knowing that the food you've got on the plate in front of you is something that you've nurtured from a seed, starting on your windowsill in your uh, home and then getting out into the garden. So, yes, you know, that has. And I, I love fresh food. I love the seasonal food as well. So um, and being outdoors and being in nature is really important to me. And obviously a passion of mine is the kitchen. So they they marry up together quite well. So, yes, absolutely. It, it does you know drive my passion in the kitchen you know what produce you've got in the garden definitely yeah and it is a lot more eco-friendly and sustainable doing it that yeah. way as well and isn't you it you also know what's going on your fruit and vegetables you know it's not coated in waxes or using pesticides or chemicals you know that the food that you're eating is a much purer form than what you could get and also packaging as well you know you're not it's just you know you're not getting food that's covered in plastic packaging you know you, you're getting it in and you know washing the earth off and then cooking and creating with it but then you can also with that waste what we do here 
is we compost everything as well so you know it's a, a full cycle so then you know your compost then goes towards next year's crop mm. so it's uh, you know a complete sort of yeah like, sort of a closed loop yeah. system isn't it yeah okay and i've got to ask you this question because it's uh, finally when will this cookbook be ready <laughs> <laughs> okay I ask that a lot so because um i don't have a product as such and my business is me and it's a a window into my journey my food journey is what my business is and the more i learn and discover is what i want to share to make it easier for people to also you know be more plant strong in their diet um, so I have been, because my, I've come from quite a long way over the last few years, um, um, I'm now revisiting old uh, recipes and this is what I've been doing in lockdown and uh, fine tuning them. So taking out the oils and the, you know, even though I didn't use refined sugars, taking out things like the coconut sugars and then sort of fine tuning them. And so I'm looking to um, get a book together, sort of um, hopefully like a, my essential um a vegan one ready for sort of Christmas and for January. So it's like a, a book to help people, like a handbook with all the nutritional information there and some basic recipes to get people started. So rather than do a whole book with lots of different things, I think I'm going to do small individual things with on different subjects because somebody who's doing baby led weaning or wants to get their children to a plant based table is might not necessarily, you know, want quick fast foods or whatever. So, you know, it's just sectioning in them, uh, my recipes out and collating them into the, into the right place. But yes, hopefully by Christmas, we will have something ready to go. So excellent. I'll make a good Christmas gift as well. I think. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. I just want to add, say, we're doing really great for time today. So I'm going to just um, say a quick hi to, hi Gail, hi Nikki, um, hi. for joining us in the live show. Um, and do, yeah, post your questions there. If we've got some um, time, then we'll obviously um, ask uh, Sarah the questions and she can answer through that. Um, but yeah, no, I just wanted to touch a bit more on that. I think it's really important. How have you found, you, you were talking about your journey and going, and you, during during lockdown, it's kind of given you the time to evaluate because you you used yes. to do these workshops and then you worked a full time job and obviously yeah. that came to an end and so now you've had to kind of reevaluate the business, relook at what you can do and you've rediscovered this passion again. And I'm so happy about it because I finally get to do more workshops and buy your books. Um, but have you found that um, you sort of you're going down a particular route with what you're doing like yeah, a specific absolutely. type of plant-based diet yeah so i um many years ago obviously i came i started my business based on gluten-free and dairy-free because my dietary requirements you know i needed my food to be that and back then there wasn't like there is now the food available in the supermarkets and that for you, know, you could get the odd vegan food or gluten-free but there was nothing that was plant-based and gluten-free so i had to sort of, um you know uh, do that and make my own food but as the more i've learned with nutrition and the more my journey so i've gone from there and being sort of vegan then moving to plant-based then whole food plant-based and i'm now sort of i've not used oil for a while in in my diet but i'm now fine tuning because lots of recipes that i've made still used a bit of oil or some sugar like the cakes and bakes and things like that so it's been really nice in lockdown to be able to revisit those recipes and fine tune them and it, take out the oils and replace those with other things so it's been fun to be able to get in the kitchen and do that i mean there's been some really good recipes come out of it there's been a few misses as well you know um but it's all experimenting and that's what's fun and it's um upping the nutrition and so you know i love sweet treats and i love food um so i like to be able to sit and you know eleven seas and have a piece of cake or flapjack but being able to know that there's no fats and there's no sugars and they're all it all fits within my my diet plan as such and a whole food plant-based and no oil no sugar um so <clears throat> the journey has it's taken a long while and you know people do transition so you know i know there's people at the beginning who are on a meat strong diet who just maybe want to put more plants on the plate and then you've got the whole sort of spectrum right through to you know where i'm sat now really which is you know um nothing processed everything made from fresh whole food 
plant-based, no oil, no sugar. So, but it's quite a leap to go from one to the other. It does have to be that journey. So with what, I can, what I've discovered and what I've learned, if I can package that up and give that to people in, like I say, a workshop or a book, it just makes it easier for people to transition, which I think is important, yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're coming to the end of the show now, um, but uh, that is, you know, really good, really good stuff there. There's been a few questions and um, people have posted in, in um, on on the post. So yeah, we'll we'll come back to you guys after the show and answer that. And Sarah will join me as well. Uh, next week, I will be talking to uh, Fran Cognetti from the Art of Being You and all about the business of listening. Uh, so details for that will go up on the page um, in the next 24 hours. Um, yeah, so thanks so much, Sarah, for joining us. Thank you. It's really a great pleasure to have you on the show. Um, and thank you to the listeners for tuning in.